Jewish history in the modern period uh, has seen many uh, very uh, drastic changes. Uh, we've seen changes in the centers of Jewish life going from, in ancient times, the land of Israel to Babylon, Spain, Eastern Europe. We've seen changes in Jewish languages, Hebrew, Aramaic, uh, Judeo-Spanish, uh, uh, Arabic, uh, Yiddish. Uh, these linguistic changes have been especially marked in the uh, recent period, the relatively recent period. In 1800, uh, the percentage of Jews in the world who spoke either uh, English or Hebrew was less than 1%. Uh, today, it's well over 90%. Uh, we've seen changes in religion. A few centuries ago, most Jews were what you might call uh, traditional. That is, they obeyed Jewish law, but there was no sense of orthodoxy, which was a reaction to modernization and to secularization. Uh, today, I would say a minority of Jews uh, obey uh, uh, the tenets, most of the tenets of Jewish law. Uh, we've seen changes in economic status uh, as recently as the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, you could say that most Jews were poor. In America, they were working class. Uh, uh, today, the economic status of Jews, at least in most countries, has greatly improved. And in the Western world, most Jews are safely ensconced in the middle class. And yet, in spite of all these changes, territorial, uh, lifestyle, attitude towards religion, language, uh, there's been uh, a fundamental uh, continuity in Jewish identity. Uh, the Jewish people have survived. There's been a great argument what enabled that survival to take place. Many would say it was religion. Others would say a sense of a common past, a sense of a common destiny. Uh, and uh, certainly, uh, the study of Jewish history, while not answering all of these questions, and I think some of these questions are not readily answerable, at least can give us more insight into these very interesting riddles of how the Jewish people have managed to maintain some kind of coherent identity, some kind of coherent sense of self, despite all these transformations. And if we want to get a sense of who the Jews are, then certainly the story of East European Jewry plays a critical role. Uh, the legacy of East European Jewry is enormous. Uh, uh, Hasidism, Yiddish literature, modern Hebrew literature, Zionism, uh, the migration to the United States and other countries. Uh, today, it seems to be very much in the past. And yet, as we think about what East European Jews left us, uh, there is so much that affects Jewish life to the present day. And what made East European Jewry so unique uh, was its development on the Polish lands, in the Polish lands. In, uh, the late Middle Ages, there were a number of important migrations in the Jewish world. One migration went from Spain to the Ottoman Empire, and uh, that resulted in places like Saloniki, Adirne, Sofia, Skopje, Istanbul, becoming major centers of Ladino culture, and at the same time, an ongoing migration of Jews from Germany, Bohemia, Mor uh, Moravia, uh, into the Polish lands. When I say 
the Polish lands, of course, what I mean is not the Poland of uh, today. Not, I'm talking about what came to be known as the Rzeczpospolita, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, which was united politically in 1569. Uh, these lands included uh, what is today Poland, Lithuania, Belarus, much of Ukraine, uh, and uh, it stretched from just east of Berlin to at its biggest point uh, uh, east of the Dnieper River. It stretched from the Baltic Sea almost to the Black Sea. 